So a few months ago, a company called Twingate reached out to me to try out their software. And since then, it has completely eliminated my need for a uh, VPN to access my internal network. And I no longer need a reverse proxy or vulnerable ports exposed to the open internet. And when it comes to actually configuring this software to connect to your local network externally, there are a ton of features and actual finite control over access to your network. You can add various users. So for example, I add myself, give myself full access to just about everything. I can add my wife and give her full access to our Synology so she can access the security system and photo backups. And maybe I have a video editor or some employee that needs access to a specific company share and you could give them access to only that device and only that specific port. And then when it comes to the actual security of the accounts and the access, you could either just do a regular username and password, or you could set up two-factor authentication. You could set up an actual authenticator app and a code. And one thing you probably noticed is this background looks a little bit different compared to most of my videos. And that's because I recently moved. And because of that, I had to kind of rebuild my network infrastructure. And because of that, I do need to do some work with Twingate. And just to be able to demonstrate this for you guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from scratch. Now you may be asking yourself, how does this actually work? This right here is the Twingate website. You can go ahead and give it a read. It will go over in a lot of detail about everything. But here, if we go to the documentation, this will give you an overview of just about everything you need to know. I'm not gonna go super far in depth in everything here, as if you have specific use cases and whatnot, you can see all that here. You can see you can use it as a VPN replacement, home lab and personal use cases, which this right here is mostly my use case. But just to give you a rough idea of how this actually works, if we go over here to architecture and we go to how Twingate works, it gives us this really nice kind of uh, layout right here of everything that's happening. The main things that you are gonna have to worry about is the actual client and the connectors. Essentially, you have a connector or two or even more running on your home lab or your local network somewhere, and that is gonna be how you actually connect to the network. The Twingate controller here is handled by Twingate. This is basically your authentication. It is the handshake in between the client, which is running on your local hardware, or your local computer that you're using to access your home network. So that will handle the handshake and then we have the client here. And you can see here, this is on AWS, so you could actually put the connector on a cloud service if you want to, but in this case, we're gonna be focusing on a on-premise use case. And if you want more examples of specifically what each of these components do, including the controller here, we have the client and the connector, you can see all that there. After the controller authenticates the connection, you will have a peer-to-peer -peer direct encrypted connection which this is nice as opposed or as compared to like a public VPN where all the data kind of has to filter through a server. In this case, it's just going to be a direct connection making latency really low. So with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and sign in. Let's sign in here. When you create a network, it is whatever you want it to be .twingate.com. And here we are. This is my connection history for my actual instance here. And you can see there are a lot of connections here in the past. There hasn't been much action in a while because I have been moving and I haven't had time to get this set up again. But this dashboard is really nice. The only actual information that's stored is kind of what you see here. They don't store any of like your uh, actual data that's um, transferring in between the peer-to-peer -peer connection, which is definitely nice for privacy sakes. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of restart. So there we go, I got rid of everything. When you first sign up and you log in, you have a thing that looks like this. It says, welcome to Twingate. Follow our setup guide to get started. And that will go ahead and take you to the document documentation page that we were just on. And you have a couple steps. First, we're gonna define the network and then set up connection to your network. This is the documentation for that. It's really easy, it gives you a step-by-step -step process of everything you are going to want to do. Back over here, we are under networks. Let's go to remote networks and we are going to add a remote network. Location, you do have a couple cloud options, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. We are gonna go with on-premise and we're gonna call this the same thing that it was. You could call it really whatever you want, it's up to you. So let's add that remote network and we can see right now it is offline. If we go ahead and open that network, we have the connectors here. Now this is how, as we saw in the kind of graph, how it's actually going to connect your peer to the network or it's the connector. <laughs> 
These names are just kind of randomly generated. If I go ahead and click on one right here, you can see this is the steps to actually deploy this connector and we can name, rename it later. So here are the various options. The ones that you're probably gonna use is either gonna be Docker or Linux. And it will just run you through all the steps right here. And you can see here, this is the Docker run command that you are going to want to input. And if I scroll up here, if I switch to Linux, for example, it's gonna switch this to a curl command in which it's gonna set that up as a uh, system CTL thing. And of course, there's other options here. You have Google Cloud, Helm, Azure, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna go ahead and set this up as a Docker command. We are going to generate our tokens. So there are my tokens. I do not need any assistance. Do make sure you don't share your tokens and I will be <laughs> deleting this specific connector after recording. So here are our containers. Now, you do have some customization options. You can enable local network connection logs, make it available on the local network. You have some settings here. I do recommend if you want to enable some of these, read the documentation to kind of learn how to do that. And then here, you scroll down earlier, we didn't have this filled in, it automatically filled it in for us. This is our Docker run command for the actual container. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that command. And just for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna just do this through the terminal. So let's connect to that Intel Nook. Yes, there we go. Ooh, we have some updates. This is unrelated, but I am gonna run these real quick. Pseudo apt upgrade. Gonna paste that in. Docker run, a whole bunch of stuff, all my keys and codes and important things that you don't wanna share with anybody. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. <sighs> Pseudo, and then that. <laughs> I always forget to do that. You can make it so you don't need to run sudo. It's recommended. Enter, and boom, just like that. And we could kind of go into a pertainer and make sure it's up and running. And there it is, Tremendous Gopher. <laughs> there we go, Tremendous Gopher is now connected. You can see we have a little warning there. One of two connectors is active. Technically, you really just need the one connector to get started and get logged in. But the reason multiple connectors, as many connectors as you can have, is generally better. Let's say I wanted to perform some external server maintenance on this specific machine. I needed to restart. If this was the only connector available and I restarted this machine, it would boot me offline, or at least uh, TwinGate would boot me because there's no actual access to the connector. You can set up multiple connectors, and that way, if one connector goes down, another connector will take over. Of course, we can edit these connectors. I'm gonna edit this, I'm gonna call this, uh, like that. And actually I'm gonna do delete because I need to remember to delete this later. Now, just as an example, we are here in my pride and joy. This is Unraid. I talked up Unraid enough in our last video. There'll be a link to that on screen now. But what we're gonna do is go over to apps and we're gonna set up another connector. And TwinGate is popular enough. There should be one in here. It might not be official. If we go to TwinGate, yeah, Cornflakes repository, this isn't official. But if we go ahead and click on install here, you can see TwinGate connector and we have our access and refresh token. Now here we can see this connector, it's not connected yet. Let's go ahead and open it up. And then from there we need to generate our tokens, authenticate, and they do this a lot. I currently only have the uh, sign in with Google thing, but every time you do anything that changes anything or any of the network infrastructure, you're gonna need to authenticate yourself, which is Pretty good, there we go. So Docker, we have our tokens, and in this case, we're not gonna need to do this command because we're doing this with a Unread application, but let's copy our access token, drop that in right here. Copy our refresh token, drop that in right here. I'm gonna edit this real quick, and there we go. All that looks good, so if I just go ahead and apply this, it is gonna do everything for us. It should be fairly quick. Booyah, there we go, done. So now if we go back over here, it's currently offline. If we refresh the page, boop, there we go. It is now online. So now you can see Hopkey Network has a green light. Go to this, we have our two connectors up and running and I could go ahead and rename that one if I would like to. Actually, let's go ahead and do that real quick. This right here is my media server. So let's save that. I have two connectors, so if one of these machines goes down, I will still be able to connect. Later on, I'm gonna add probably two more connectors just for that extra little bit of safety. Now what we're gonna do is talk about the actual uh, setting up a team and giving yourself and other people access to it. So if I go to team, you could see right now I am the only team member. If I click on myself, you could see I'm part of a group. Everybody, you can set, we're not gonna get into groups too much right now, but you can set up groups. So if you have like an IT team and you want them to have like far more access than like your marketing team or whatever, you can set that up through groups so you don't have to give each person specific permissions for every single device. And to actually start that, we are going to need to set up our resources. So these are the actual devices that people can connect to. If we go ahead and add a resource, we could give it a label. So this one is going to be the uh, Unraid machine. Unraid. <laughs> this is gonna be in my 
dot 90. This is going to be on the Hopkey network network and you have policies here. So these are your actual security policies. I'll touch on that in a minute, but you have the default policy, which just is a, you use like sign in with Google and then you have two factor authentication there. But for there, I'm just going to create this resource. Here is where you select the group or who can actually access this. So we're going to say everybody, you could set the policy here as the default policy and I'm going to grant access to everybody. So there you go. And now if we go over here to policies, for example, you could actually see the policy and you could see the default is used by uh, one device. If I click on that real quick, we have some device security. So if I go to manage, you could set any device, only trusted devices. So as people log in, you could set devices as trusted, or we could go to custom and set like minimum OS requirements if you would like to. Let's click out of there real fast. Now, real quick, earlier I mentioned the uh, being able to restrict port access to various resources. Here we're on the Unraid device, and if I go ahead and edit, here we have the option for ports. If I click on that, this is where you can set up your port restrictions. So asterisk is all ports, but if I wanted to, I could allow only access to Let's say 5055, 5055. That right there is my overseer service. So theoretically, I let's say I only wanted that one service to be able to be accessed through this. So I would hit update resource. And there we go. And you can see we have the protocol restrictions right here. And for this, even if we wanted to, I could edit this and call this specifically overseer update that resource. So now it is a service specific access. And then from there, if I wanted to, I could just copy this local IP, go to resources, I could create a resource. This one can be unraid and I can give full access to this one. So create that resource with no restrictions. Here's our groups. I created a little one just a second ago called editor. Let's say for, let's say I wanted to give the editor full access to that. So we wanted to grant access the editor full access to the device, but we wanted everybody to have access to overseer. That is how you would go about that process. Now on the client side and to actually connect to this, they're going to have clients for Windows, Mac, Linux, Chrome, iOS, and Android. I've been using both the Windows and Linux one. If I go to Linux over here, for example, click on download, you can see the actual distributions. They support Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, and CentOS, as well as a few others, including Gentoo, Nix, and Arch. I honestly have no idea what ThinPro is, but basically it uses SystemD as well as Network Manager to go ahead and do this. And setting it up on Linux is fairly easy. It's just a curl command to get a uh, sh script or a bash script, and then you run their setup process. But for our example, just to demonstrate it working, I'm going to be doing this on my Android phone. Let's disconnect from our Wi-Fi. I have the Twingate app right here, so I'm gonna sign in to connect. There we go, we're authenticated. And you could see the only device I can actually see right now is Overseer, because right now I am part of the everyone group. If I go over here, team, myself, I am in group, everyone. So if I tap on this, copy the address, paste it in and go to the port 5055, enter. You can see I have access to Overseer and I'm doing this through my mobile network so I'm not connected to my local network. Now if I wanted to go somewhere else such as the Unraid homepage, which is just the address, boom, it, it's just stuck. It's not gonna load because I haven't granted myself access to that. Now if I come over here and let's go ahead and add the group, I'm gonna add myself to the editor group and then you can see immediately I have Unraid right there now. So if I go back over here and let's refresh that, I now have access to Unraid. So super cool stuff. And just to kind of show you what you could do with this, just as an example, it's not uh, restricted to uh, web pages and web access. I'm gonna go back to users. Let's go to network, uh, devices. Oh, that's not what I'm looking for, but you can see the devices there and I could actually manage specific devices. I could verify devices. And that's how you'd go about giving um, verified only devices access to specific services or resources. But if we go over to network, we go to resources. I'm gonna add a new resource and this is going to be my Intel Nook, not Nick Nook. Same device that we have one of the connectors installed on. This is going to be Hopkey Network, create resource. I'm gonna go ahead and give this to the editor, which I currently have access to, so grant access. So now if I open this up real quick, go back over here, you can see I now have the Intel Nook. Now I'm not gonna just connect to a website, what I could do real quick, a terminal application. We have the Nook there, if I go over, click edit, you could see it's the 10.0.0.70. I am still not connected to my Wi-Fi, just using my mobile internet. Tap on that. 
And there we go, we are connected. Neo fetch, boom. So not only do you have access to the applications through a web browser, you can access it just like you would if you're connected to that local network, whether that be through a terminal, through a FTP application such as FileZilla, network shares. So this is the service I'm currently using to access my network remotely. Big thank you to Twingate for reaching out and uh, partnering with me to create this video. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.